Hey guys, there's a pretty good chance that at least part of the day, your computer is sitting there not being used or it's not doing anything. So in this video, I wanna show you how to use Boink to uh, basically let your computer help scientists solve problems. So according to the Berkeley University website, Boink lets you help cutting edge science research using your computer or Android device. Boink downloads scientific computing jobs to your computer and runs them invisibly in the background. It's easy and safe and about 30 science projects use Boink. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up Boink on your home media server. Uh, you don't really need Open Media Vault for this. You can do this with just Docker and Portainer the way I'm doing it. Um, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Boink and actually contribute some of your unused uh, compute cycles on your computer to help scientists solve problems. Okay guys, so in order to install Boink in a container, uh, like we're gonna to do today, we're actually gonna do it through Stacks, just like uh, we do in a lot of the videos here. Um, this is the official uh, Docker uh, page for the Boink client. Um, this is the Docker Compose that we're going to use for this. Now, this is a, a fairly generic, a Docker Compose file here, but if you scroll up um, in this page, uh, there are some different variations that you can use uh, for, uh, let's, let's just keep scrolling up here, there we go. So um, so if you've got an AMD GPU, uh, you can modify it to, to do uh, or to utilize the, the AMD infrastructure a little more efficiently. Uh, just know that in, in that case, you'll have to install the Rock M driver, um, uh, reboot your system and then do that. If you wanna do an Intel GPU, uh, same thing, you'll have to install the Intel GPU driver and then go this route. Um, legacy GPU or Intel GPU, uh, multi GPU, NVIDIA GPU. There, there's lots of different options here uh, if you want to get the most out of specific hardware. Um, for the sake of this video, though, uh, what we're going to do is just use the generic uh, Docker Compose file here just to uh, show you that it does work and how it works. Just know that if you want to utilize your hardware a little differently, there are additional options for that in this uh, page here. So like I said, we are going to use this uh, this generic version of the Docker Compose file for the sake of this video here. Just know that if you wanna utilize that other hardware differently or more efficiently, there are different ways to do that, but we're not gonna cover that uh, just because the device I'm using doesn't have uh, any kind of additional graphics card or anything like that. Uh, so we're just gonna use the generic one for this video. So uh, what we're gonna do is just copy this. We're gonna come over to Portainer here. We're gonna go to Stacks. Uh, if we open this up, you can actually see that uh, I've been doing some testing for Boink and Boolean at home. Uh, I've had better luck with the Boink at this point. Okay, so just note that at this point, uh, because I already had Boink installed, I was able to just open that Boink uh, stack. You will have to click a uh, new stack here and then paste in what we just copied from that Docker page. So uh, I just didn't want there to be any confusion there. I already had a stack set up with Boink. Uh, so you'll just have to click on new stack and paste that in there. And then you can kind of follow along from there. Uh, so if we come over here to the editor, uh, you can see that uh, I just, it, I've already tested this. We're just gonna paste this in here. There's literally nothing you need to change. Um, if you wanted to change the password here, you could, but I'm not going to. Uh, and this is so that we can uh, connect remotely with the Boink uh, desktop app uh, that I'll show here in just a moment. So now that we've pasted this in here, all we're gonna do is click update the stack. Uh, or, or deploy the stack as the case may be since you're doing this for the first time. So the next thing we need to do now that this is running, uh, here we can see everything here looks good uh, in the logs. So we'll come go ahead and back out of that. What we'll do is we'll go over to the Berkeley uh, University website um, to their Boink area. And this link will be in the description down below. So what you'll do is you'll download uh, the Boink client here. Uh, the one for Windows anyway. Uh, if you're running this in VirtualBox, you can do it that way. But uh, for the sake of this video, we're gonna use this blue link right here. Uh, I've already downloaded that and installed it. Uh, so once you download this, just open it up, install it. Um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and open it. Let me type this in. Okay, so this is, I actually currently got this running on my home media server. Um, right now, everything is suspended because uh, it's set up to uh, stop using CPU cycles if my uh, if other things on the server are using more than I think 25 or 50% of the processing power. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go to file, we're gonna do a new Boink manager window, or that's what I'm gonna do. 
Um, I'm just gonna drag this up here and I'm gonna type in uh, the IP address of the server. So that's gonna be 192.168.1.238 uh, and the password. Now the password is um, this 123 that's right here. Um, that's why you can change this if you want to, but um, again, I don't know if it's gonna be totally necessary here. So we'll go ahead and, and just type in 123 there. We'll click okay. And then this window here um, should pop up and it's going to give you the option to choose what project you want to work on. So uh, you can actually go to, to categories and you can narrow this down to biology and medicine, cognitive science, to, uh, distributed sensing, like you've got some options here. Now, because of everything going on in the world right now, I wanna do biology and medicine. And then I'm gonna do RNA world here and I'll click next. So it's communicating with the server and let me, nope, I can't bring that up. Um, <clears throat> so here you will, uh, either create a new user for the RNA World server, or if you've already got an account, you can click on new, uh, existing user. So let me see if I've got, already got a login here. All right, so the project has been added, so we can go ahead and click on finish there. Go ahead and drag this up. I'm gonna minimize the other one here. So here you can see that it's connected. Um, and we'll just need to give it some time to uh, to go through the process of downloading a project to start computing. So let's do active tasks, nothing there yet. But we'll just need to give this some time uh, to connect to the project here. So right now, um, oh, so it's actually communication deferred for one hour. So I'll come back in about an hour and take a look at this. Okay, so I got impatient and I wanted to uh, kind of move along with this project. So what I did was I actually uh, changed my my project, the one that I'm going to work on over here to Asteroids at Home. Uh, and the way you can actually uh, change uh, what you want to do here is you can go, come up to Tools, you can go to Add a Project, and then you it'll take you right back to this screen where you can then uh, go ahead and pick whatever project you want to work on. You go through that process, uh, click next, uh, then it'll ask you to, to log in or create a new account, just like we saw a minute ago, uh, just like this. And we'll go through that process. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. Uh, but here you can see that I am lending uh, my compute power here. I'm actually going to drag this over uh, so that you can actually see. Let me make this a little bigger. There we go. Uh, so here we can see what it's doing, uh, the amount of time that's elapsed for uh, each of the different tasks that we're working on, uh, the amount of time that's remaining for each of those tasks based on our hardware, uh, that sort of thing. Of course, this is an estimated time for completion. Um, but here you can see all of the data that it's processing or what it's working on rather. So uh, that's the easiest way to set up Boink for the purposes of lending your unused uh, CPU cycles to uh, help with uh, scientific research uh, and actually be a part of choosing which scientific research you want to help with. Okay guys, so that is how to set up Boink on your uh, home media server using Docker and Portainer. Uh, it's a fairly simple process, uh, just kind of copy and paste uh, and then set up the application on your desktop to communicate uh, with your server. Uh, like I said, fairly simple process, just takes a few minutes to set up and then you can actually like I said, contribute your unused compute cycles to help scientists solve problems and, and fix things and get more information, that sort of thing. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, uh, do me a favor in the comments and let me know uh, not only that you got it working, but what, um, what projects you're contributing to. That'd be really cool. Let's talk about what kind of projects you're contributing to in the comment section down Below. And I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover here. Again, remember that you can manipulate that uh, Docker Compose file uh, to, to work better with different hardware um, as needed. So keep that in mind as well. Again, all the links will be in the description down below so you can go ahead and check that out. Um, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, a couple of things to get out of the way though. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, uh, setting up Docker stuff, uh, home server stuff, that kind of thing, uh, definitely get subscribed. I've got more new content coming out all the time because you guys keep sending me really really great project ideas and I really do appreciate that. Uh, if you've got ideas for other projects you'd like to see uh, set up in Docker, I'll leave those in the comment section down below. I actually get a fair amount of my ideas for these videos from you guys, so thanks for that. Uh, also, if you want to help the channel, uh, definitely get subscribed. That would help. Uh, you can give the video a thumbs up. That would help. Uh, also, if you'd like to uh, contribute in other ways, there will be a couple of links in the description.
option for a service called Coffee, which is like a tip jar. I've also got a, a Patreon set up uh, where you can contribute, you know, $1, $5, whatever you want to contribute. Um, but just know if you do the $5 tier, that will give you access to a patrons only Discord server. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, if you'd like to help support the channel and get uh, kind of a private access to, uh, to that server. So I think that covers basically everything. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.